You can be a Titan from Attack on Titan and build it as a playable character in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. It's actually fairly easy to do, so let's go ahead and build all of the main Titans in Dungeons & Dragons. And I wanted to build all of the Titans because I've been a huge fan of the show. But if you like any D&D related content, I try and post here every single week. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. And I've heard that if you happen to subscribe, you're more likely to roll 3 nat 20s in your next D&D session. Trust me, it happens. I've seen it in the comments. Since we're going to be doing multiple builds, we're going to run through the highlights of them, but I will make sure that character sheets for all of these builds are up on my Patreon. First, we need to get some of the basics down. Aaron Yeager is actually a very specific build that I'm going to save for the end, and he is going to be way different than the rest. So for the majority of these builds, we're going to go with a variant human. This allows us to pick up a feat right at first level, and the feat we're going to grab is Fighting Initiate. This allows us to choose a fighting style right when we start this overall build, and the fighting style we're going to go with is Unarmed Fighting, because most of the time the Titans are just thrown with their fists. So that's what I'm going to lean into. This allows us to use our Strength modifier to do Unarmed Strikes, and those unarmed strikes are a 1d6 if we have anything in our hands, but if our hands are completely empty and we just want to duke it out, then you can use a d8 for the damage instead. Then since we are doing multiple builds, I'm not going to worry about the stats, but we are going to go ahead and start off with a fighter. When you become a fighter, you get a fighting style right at first level, and this is going to depend on which type of titan you want to be. If you want to be the armored titan, you're going to want to choose defense. This allows you to add a plus one to your armor class as long as you're wearing some sort of armor, and the Armored Titan would probably be wearing armor. If you want to be something more like the Warhammer Titan, then you're probably going to want to get either dueling or great weapon fighting just so you can wield the weapon a little more effectively. But we're going to address his abilities a little more in a second. Also at first level fighter you get second wins so you can regain some hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level using your bonus action once per short or long rest. At second level of fighter you get action surge so you can take a whole extra action once per short or long rest. And then at third level of fighter you get a martial archetype otherwise known as a subclass. And if we want to be a titan we got to be pretty big. So we're going to the martial archetype rune knight this gives you the ability rune carver so you can enchant your weapons or armor with particular runes that are usually descendant of the giants you get things like cloud runes fire runes or whatever we're not going to focus on those though because we have a lot to get through the more important feature that you get is giant might so as a bonus action if you're smaller than large you can become large this will give you advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws and if you hit any creature in your titanic form you deal an extra 1d6 of damage even if it's an unarmed strike or a weapon attack becoming large does get you that first breakthrough of becoming a titan so with that in mind we're going to diverge into our first specific titan which is the jaw titan so now what you would want to do is you're going to take this to level four just so you can get that ability score improvement but then you're going to want to multi-class over to barbarian multi-classing into barbarian allows you to use unarmored defense if you want to or you can stick with medium armor either one works and you get access to rage giving you resistance to most normal types of damage as long as you activate it and you can deal additional damage as long as you are dealing your damage with strength. The only downside of being a barbarian is that when you're raging, you can't cast any spells, but we're not focusing that much on that part for the Jaw Titan anyways. Level 2 of Barbarian gives you Danger Sense, so you get a little better at Dexterity saving throws, and at second level you get Reckless Attack, meaning you can just dive in and start attacking relentlessly, but you give your enemies advantage at attacking you. Where this really becomes the Jaw Titan is when you get to choose your Barbarian subclass. Barbarian subclasses are known as Primal Paths, and the one we would take for the Jaw Titan is the Beast Barbarian. Because when you become a Beast Barbarian, you get Form of the Beast. So you take on some sort of beast-like appearance, and you can use that as your weapon or defensive ability. But considering we're the Jaw Titan, we're going to go ahead and transform our Bite ability so now you have a bite attack. So now you can chomp down dealing 1d8 piercing damage for a hit. And once on each of your turns when you hit a creature with that bite attack, you regain hit points equal to your proficiency bonus as long as you have less than half of your total hit points remaining. That sets in place the Jaw Titan. You can continue to level up in either Barbarian or Fighter. I would probably recommend Fighter because you're closer to getting extra attack and you can get more and more extra attacks from being a fighter. But now let's go 
back over to the rest of the core titans. Most of the rest of the titans are pretty darn big, so we're going to keep leveling up with fighter. When you take your fourth level in fighter, you get an ability score improvement, and then at fifth level of fighter, you get extra attack, allowing you to attack twice as your action. Then at sixth level of fighter, you get another ability score improvement, and then at seventh level of fighter, you're going to want to lean into the idea of being the armored titan because you get runic shield runite grants you this ability so you can help protect your allies so if somebody other than you gets hit by an attack you can force them to roll a d20 and take the second roll then at eighth level of fighter you get another ability score improvement and then at ninth level of fighter you get a feature called indomitable allowing you to re-roll a failed saving throw but you can only do this once per long rest. Then at 10th level of fighter, and especially in Rune Knight, you get the feature Giant Stature. So now you just throw a couple of inches in your more normal base form, not in your giant form, and that extra damage you get from being in a gigantic form upgrades from a d6 to a d8. Then at 11th level of fighter, you get another extra attack, so now you can attack three times on each action. Then at 12th level of fighter, you get another ability score improvement. Then jumping up to 13th level, you get another use of Indomitable per long rest. And then at 14th level, you get another ability score improvement. And then at 15th level, you get another feature from being a rune knight. Those special runes that you could place on your armor or weapons or whatever, now you can use each of those features twice because you're granted the special ability master of runes then at 16th level of fighter you get another ability score improvement and here is where you might actually want to diverge again because if you want to be the warhammer titan you could go ahead and just stick it through as a fighter you have access to plenty of weapons and that's totally fine alternatively though you could multi-class into a wizard. This will allow you enough levels in a caster class to be able to use Alter Self. The spell Alter Self allows you to transform your own flesh into weapons. And that's essentially what the Warhammer Titan does. And then for the remaining Titans, I would go ahead and keep going in Fighter for two more levels. Because at 17th level, you get another use of Action Surge per short or long rest, and one more use of Indomitable per long rest. Then at 18th level of Fighter, you get another feature from being a Rune Knight, and this is called Runic Juggernaut. So now you don't just turn large, you can turn huge. So you are this insanely massive thing. You're not quite the Colossal Titan yet, but I'll get there in a second. But for the rest of the Titans, you still have plenty to play around with with two levels. If you wanted to be something similar to the female titan, she's pretty good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, so I would amp that up by taking a couple levels in Monk. That way you can use martial arts and you already have the ability to use unarmed strikes thanks to your fighter level and that damage is gonna take on that fighter level ability. So even though martial arts usually just sticks you with a d4 at your first level of Monk, now you can still use a d8. So you have plenty of combat ability, you can still always make an attack as a bonus action thanks to being a monk, and with two levels of monk, you get access to key so you can still do flurry of blows. If you wanted to lean more into the armored titan, I would take those last two levels and make them a cleric, because we've already established that the armored titan would be wearing armor, and a cleric can choose to be a forge cleric. Then you can enchant your armor for an additional plus one armor class. And you get access to the spell Shield of Faith. So you can get another plus two to that armor class. And you can get all of that with one level in Cleric. So if you wanted, you can still take that last ability score improvement from being a fighter. We still have two more Titans before we jump over to Eren. And if you're the Beast Titan, with your 18 levels in Fighter, I would go ahead and take two levels in Druid. And not just that, I would change the race for the Beast Titan as well. He's got a totally different look than the rest of the Titans, and I think it fits perfectly with a Furbolg. Furbolgs automatically get the ability to speak with animals, which fits very well. And if you want to lean even harder into being that Beast Titan, you can take the two levels after your 18th level in Fighter and go ahead and multi-class into Druid because that's just as beast-like as you're gonna get. That leaves us with one main Titan to worry about before we jump over to Eren. And that's the Colossal Titan. We can already become huge thanks to Runic Juggernaut. And if you're a Colossal Titan, you can go ahead and just keep taking those levels all the way to 20 and Fighter, because you don't need any multi-class. That gives you one more ability score improvement and one more extra attack. So now you can attack four times per action. But how do you become the Colossal Titan in this situation? Well, you can become huge already. 
So we need to get one size larger, which is the largest you can be as a creature in D&D, which is technically gargantuan. And the way we can pull this off is by choosing a different medium sized creature to start with. You're not gonna be starting off as a human if you wanna be a colossal titan. Instead, you're gonna start off as a Durgar. These are special kinds of dwarves that live underground. But if you wanna be colossal, you gotta make that sacrifice. This particular race gets a very special kind of magic. This Durgar magic gives you a spell right when you hit third level of this overall build. And it gives you the spell Enlarge Reduce. This would allow you to shrink a character if you really want, but it can also enlarge a character, doubling its size or upgrading it by one size class. So if you were just medium, you would go to large, but since we're already huge, thanks to a runic juggernaut feature from being our rune knight fighter, we can now upgrade to gargantuan. When you're enlarged like this, you actually deal an extra 1d4 of damage with your attacks on top of the extra 1d8 that you would do from being a runic juggernaut. Plus you can still just hit stuff for your basic 1d8 thanks to your unarmed fighting style, meaning that every attack is gonna be dealing 2d8 plus 1d4 plus your strength modifier. And you are so unreasonably massive that you are just gonna be annoying the crap out of anyone at your table that tries to make space for you. So out of all the Titans, we covered the jaw, the warhammer, the beast, the female, the armored titan, and even the colossus titan. The founding titan feels more like a god and it's kind of hard to stat gods and we're going to kind of ignore the pure and abnormal titans because those are more mindless creatures than anything. So all that's left is the attack titan aka Aaron Yeager. While we could go ahead and throw in some random levels of divination wizard for his memories through time thing, we're gonna kind of ignore that and focus more on his pure combat prowess. Early on, he is just mindlessly just attacking with pure rage and screaming out and doing whatever. So I think it's much better to go with a barbarian to start than a fighter. You don't need any armor being a barbarian, so you can go ahead and take on armor defense. You get access to rage, so you can scream out and attack very mercilessly. You get reckless attack, so you get advantage on those attacks. And speaking of those attacks, you're still going to want to be a variant human that takes the unarmed fighting style, so you can punch like crazy. But when it comes to a barbarian subclass, you're going to want to take Path of the Giant. This is going to give you very similar features to being a rune knight, while at the same time being a barbarian. You still have Eren's ability to shout out and let everybody around to hear you because there's a feature called giant power. So now you can cast Thaumaturgy and yell out as loud as you want. You get the ability Giant's Havoc so you can throw items and still get the bonus damage for your rage that barbarians get access to, but usually they don't have that bonus to their ranged damage and they get giant stature, so they get to upgrade their size to large, as long as they're raging. Then you can keep boosting this up even further. You get ability score improvements at 4th level, you get extra attack at 5th level, as well as fast movement, so you can boost up your overall walking speed by 10 feet. At 6th level, you somehow get the ability to add elemental damage to your overall attacks, and that damage gets an extra 1d6 of that element type. But we can just say it's thunder, so that way you're just booming and hitting so hard it's letting out a shockwave. Then at 7th level of fighter, you get Feral Instinct, giving you advantage on your initiative rolls. At 8th level, you get another ability score improvement. And at 9th level, you get a Brutal Critical. So now if you score a critical hit, you can deal one extra dice worth of damage. Then at 10th level of Barbarian, you get another feature from being a giant Barbarian called Mighty Impel. So now you can just pick up a creature and throw it at another creature if you want to, or use them as a weapon and just bash people. Technically, it only says that you can throw them, but I like the idea of being able to just use somebody to smack somebody else. Then at 11th level of Barbarian, you get Relentless Rage. So now if you're getting just massively wounded, you can go ahead and push on through. You make a constitution saving throw and you can avoid dropping to zero hit points. Then at 12th level of Barbarian, you get another ability score improvement. And then at 13th level, you get one more brutal critical die. So now if you crit, you get to roll three extra dice. Then at 14th level of Barbarian, you get the feature from being a giant Barbarian called Demiurgic Colossus. So now instead of turning just large, you can turn huge, just like you did from being a rune knight, but it happens way earlier as far as levels because this is happening at 14th level and a rune knight has to wait till 18th level, which makes sense because you're the protagonist of this anime. On top of that, the extra damage that you get from Elemental Cleaver boosts from 1d6 to 2d6. Then at 15th level of Barbarian, you get Persistent Rage, so now you can stay in your Titan form as long as you want to. But 
Then I would jump over to a multi-class. What I would do is jump over to Monk, because that seems to fit Aaron Yeager a little better. Monks get access to martial arts, so they get to punch a little better, but you can already do that thanks to your unarmed fighting style, and it's gonna be way better than your martial arts die. But now you can go ahead and do an unarmed strike as a bonus action as well. At second level of Monk, you get access to key, so now you can use Flurry of Blows, or Step of the Wind, or even take the dodge action as a disengage action with patient defense. Additionally, you get to move a little faster at second level of monk because you have unarmored movement. So now you get another 10 feet on top of the extra movement you got from being a barbarian, meaning you can move an extra 20 feet per movement. Then at third level of monk, you get a monastic tradition, otherwise known as a subclass, and I would just take way of the open hand. It's a very simple subclass, but it seems pretty fitting for Aaron. So now if you use your Flurry of Blows feature, you can add an additional benefit to it. Trying to knock your enemies prone or push them or just force them to not take reactions until the end of your next turn. I was tempted to go with Way of the Long Death instead because I've been waiting just like everybody else for the final part of this series to come out, but I felt like Way of the Open Hand just fit a little better. Then you have one level up, so might as well just finish it out, Monk. This gives you one more ability score improvement and it brings you to 20th level overall. I didn't dive too massively into all these specifics with this. I wanted to cover as many Titans as possible to celebrate that the other episodes are finally coming out and I'm just pumped about it. If there's anything you do differently to build out these Titans, let me know in the comments down below. And if you want access to the character sheet for all of these builds with all of the specifics, feel free to check out my Patreon where I have access to all of the character sheets for all of my builds. And overall, my patrons are pretty awesome. Here they are scrolling on by. They're pretty darn sweet, especially my player character patrons. Natron209, Johnny Dyer, Kevin Shirley, Zephros, That Funny Man 57, Joshua Maynard, CGC 2014, Afstorm, Elisa Martinez, Panda Milkshake, Ted Z, Andrew Nobles, Carcat, Kitsune, Decker, Joint, Z13, Viral Narivar, Daniel Galvin, and the Dino 21. Then there's the Dungeon Master level patrons that I play D&D with. Shane Gilroy, Conman ZX, Cypher Society, Talon Starkey, Demiurge, Eric Wade, Zalvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then there's the God Tier level patron who goes above and beyond anything I ever expected and contributes an incredible amount that helps me a ton. And that's Game Stake. So a very special thank you to him for being such an awesome patron. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as a massive, insane insanely powerful titan in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, because I feel like a campaign in the Attack on Titan universe would just be absolutely nuts. <laughs>